Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, known more commonly as ADHD, is a neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by persistent inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. The signs and symptoms are the result of executive dysfunction, meaning a disruption in the way the brain is able to regulate and control thought processes. Based on these signs and symptoms, there are three main subtypes of ADHD, which are predominantly inattentive, with features of a lack of attention, as the name suggests, predominantly hyperactive impulsive, where there is an excess of activity and acting on impulses, and combine type, where features of both are present. This is the most common case, seen in around 62% of patients. Inattentive examples could be often overlooking details or making careless mistakes, difficulty maintaining focus on tasks or during conversation, even when there's no obvious distraction. Others are failing to follow instructions, complete tasks, organise tasks, losing items and forgetfulness. Females tend to display more symptoms of inattention and distractibility than hyperactivity and impulsivity. The hyperactive impulsive features include trouble sitting still, fidgeting, talking constantly including interrupting others, or even being unable to wait turns such as in a line. As patients get older, the symptoms become less evident. Poor handwriting and dyslexia have also been found to be more prevalent in patients with ADHD. Additionally, emotional dysregulation is considered to be a core feature, which is an emotional response that does not fit within traditionally accepted emotional responses. This could be tantrums or angry outbursts, crying in situations that don't affect other people, or becoming easily stressed and frustrated with seemingly trivial tasks. However, it is difficult to define the point at which normal responses end and abnormal ones begin. In two out of three cases, children with ADHD will also have other psychiatric disorders, including anxiety and depression, sleep disorders, autism spectrum disorder, or learning disabilities. ADHD persists to adulthood in 30 to 50% of cases. As a result, there can be social consequences, such as difficulty in completing school and holding down a job. There is a higher prevalence of substance abuse disorders in ADHD patients and an increased risk of suicide across all age groups. ADHD patients are also overrepresented in prison, with some studies suggesting a 25% incidence. The mechanism behind ADHD is not fully understood, although it is thought to be the result of changes in production or the use of dopamine and noradrenaline, which act as neurotransmitters in the nervous system. Specifically, the mesolimbic dopamine pathway and locus ceruleus noradrenergic system are involved in executive functions and stress responses, and these are thought to be fundamental in the pathogenesis of ADHD. Research has also found that the anterior cingulate gyrus and dorsolateral prefrontal cortex are smaller in ADHD patients, which could explain the deficits in goal-directed behaviour. Genetics are thought to play a role in the causes, with a 74% heritability, which roughly is how much someone's genes affects differences in their traits. Siblings of children diagnosed with ADHD are three to four times more likely to also suffer the condition. The environment also has a significant impact, including multiple related to pregnancy and birth. This could be exposure to alcohol, smoking, or insecticides as a fetus. Low birth weight and premature births are also risk factors, as are infections up to early childhood, such as rubella or varicella zoster virus. Some studies quote 30% of children with traumatic brain injuries later develop ADHD. Overall, it is a clinical diagnosis with no specific laboratory or imaging tests, so history is the basis of the diagnosis.
The DSM-5 criteria for ADHD are divided into the subtypes. There are nine long-term symptoms of inattention or hyperactivity impulsivity, and of these nine, six must be present in children, while five are needed in teenagers or adults. These symptoms need to also have been present between the ages of six and 12 years and need to affect more than one environment. These symptoms must also produce social, school, or work-related impairment. The management includes the use of medication and therapy. Behavioural therapies are first line in mild symptoms or patients that are school-aged, which could include cognitive behavioural therapy and psychoeducation. Interpersonal therapy and family therapy are other options. The mainstay of medication are stimulants, like amphetamines or methylphenidate, which are dopamine and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors, which coincides with the suspected pathophysiology. Amphetamines have the additional effect of increasing the release of dopamine. 70% of patients respond to these medications, but some side effects to be aware of include insomnia, increased blood pressure, and a decreased appetite. Non-stimulant medications include antidepressants and alpha-adrenergic agonists. Atomoxetine is a noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor and is particularly commonly used, and bupropion is another option. Guanfacine and clonidine are alpha-adrenergic agonists, which are other options, particularly in children and adolescents. Exercise has also been found to be beneficial as an add-on therapy.